Yaroslav I, Grand Prince of Rus, known as Yaroslav the Wise or Yaroslav the Wise, Old East Slavic, comma Yaroslav Volodymyrovich Mordry, Old Norse, Jarosilf, Russian, comma Yaroslav Mudry, Ukrainian, semicolon C. 978. The 20th of February 1054, was thrice Grand Prince of Novgorod and Kiev, uniting the two principalities for a time under his rule. Yaroslav's Christian name was George, Yuri, after Saint George, Old East Slavic, I, Gjurigi, a son of the Varanian, Viking, Grand Prince Vladimir the Great. He was vice regent of Novgorod at the time of his father's death in 1015. Subsequently, his eldest surviving brother, Svartopolk the Accursed, killed three of his other brothers and seized power in Kiev. Yaroslav, with the active support of the Novgorodians and the help of Varanian mercenaries, defeated Svartopolk and became the Grand Prince of Kiev in 1019. Under Yaroslav the codification of legal customs and princely enactments was begun, and this work served as the basis for a law code called the Rushkaya Pravda, Rus Truth. Law. During his lengthy reign, Rus reached the zenith of its cultural flowering and military power. Main article, Bolslaw's intervention in the Kievan succession crisis, 1018. The early years of Yaroslav's life are shrouded in mystery. He was one of the numerous sons of Vladimir the Great, presumably his second by Ronida of Politsk, although his actual age as stated in the primary chronicle and corroborated by the examination of his skeleton in the 1930s, would place him among the youngest children of Vladimir. It has been suggested that he was a child begotten out of wedlock after Vladimir's divorce from Ronida and marriage to Anna Porphyrogenator, or even that he was a child of Anna Porphyrogenator herself. Yaroslav figures prominently in the Norse sagas under the name of Jarislav the Lame. His legendary lameness probably resulting from a narrow wound, was corroborated by the scientists who examined his remains. In his youth, Yaroslav was sent by his father to rule the northern lands around Rostov but was transferred to Novgorod, as befitted a senior heir to the throne, in 1010. While living there, he founded the town of Yaroslav, literally, Yaroslavs, on the Volga. His relations with his father were apparently strained and grew only worse on the news that Vladimir bequeathed the Kyivan throne to his younger son, Boris. In 1014 Yaroslav refused to pay tribute to Kiev and only Vladimir's death, in July 1015, prevented a war. During the next four years Yaroslav waged a complicated and bloody war for Kiev against his half-brother Sviatopolk, who was supported by his father-in-law, Duke Bolslaw I. Krobry of Poland. During the course of this struggle, Several other brothers, Boris, Gleb, and Sviatoslav, were brutally murdered. The primary chronicle accused Sviatopolk of planning those murders, while the saga of Eamond is often interpreted as recounting the story of Boris's assassination by the Varanians in the service of Yaroslav. Yaroslav defeated Sviatopolk in their first battle, in 1016, and Sviatopolk fled to Poland. One of his first actions as a Grand Prince was to confer on the loyal Novgorodians, who had helped him to gain the Kyivan throne, numerous freedoms and privileges. Thus, the foundation of the Novgorodian Republic was laid. For their part, the Novgorodians respected Yaroslav more than they did other Kyivan princes, and the princely residents in their city, next to the marketplace, and where the Veshofen convened, was named Yaroslavovodovorysk. Yaroslav's court, after him. It probably was during this period that Yaroslav promulgated the first code of laws in the East Slavic lands. Yaroslav's justice, now better known as Rushkaya Pravda, Rus Truth, Law. Leaving aside the legitimacy of Yaroslav's claims to the Kyivan throne and his postulated guilt in the murder of his brothers, Nestor the chronicler and later Russian historians often presented him as a model of virtue styling him the wise. A less appealing side of his personality is revealed by his having imprisoned his youngest brother Sudislav for life. Yet another brother, Mstislav of Tmuterokan, whose distant realm bordered the northern Caucasus and the Black Sea, hastened to Kiev and, despite reinforcements led by Yaroslav's brother-in-law King Ain and Jacob of Sweden, as Jikun, blind and dressed in a gold suit, nine, 
inflicted a heavy defeat on Yaroslav in 1024. Yaroslav and Mstislav then divided Kyivaneris between them, the area stretching left from the Dnieper, with the capital at Cherniev, was ceded to Mstislav until his death in 1036. In his foreign policy, Yaroslav relied on the Scandinavian alliance and attempted to weaken the Byzantine influence on Kiev. In 1030, he reconquered Redrus from the Poles and concluded an alliance with King Casimir I of Poland, sealed by the latter's marriage to Yaroslav's sister Maria. In another successful military raid the same year, he founded Uriyev, to date Artu, Estonia, named after St. George, or Yuri, Yaroslav's patron saint and forced the surrounding province of Ugonia to pay annual tribute. In 1043, Yaroslav staged a naval raid against Constantinople led by his son Vladimir and General Vishata. Although the Rus navy was defeated, Yaroslav managed to conclude the war with a favorable treaty and prestigious marriage of his son Vsevlod to the emperor's daughter. It has been suggested that the peace was so advantageous because the Kyvans had succeeded in taking a key Byzantine possession in Crimea, Chisans, to defend his state from the Bekenics and other nomadic tribes. Threatening it from the south he constructed a line of forts, composed of Yurov, Boguslav, Kanif, Korsan and Pariaslav. To celebrate his decisive victory over the Pekanigs in 1036, who thereupon never were a threat to Kiev, he sponsored the construction of the St. Sophia Cathedral in 1037. That same year there were built monasteries of St. George and St. Irene. Some mentioned and other celebrated monuments of his reign such as the Golden Gates of Kiev have been perished during the Mongol invasion but later is toured. Yaroslav was a notable patron of book culture and learning. In 1051, he had a monk Kylarian proclaimed the Metropolitan of Kiev, thus challenging old Byzantine tradition of placing Greeks on the Episcopal Seas. Alarian's discourse on Yaroslav and his father Vladimir is frequently cited as the first work of Old East Slavic literature. In 1019, Yaroslav married Inge Jodolov's daughter daughter of the King of Sweden, and gave Ladoga to her as a marriage gift. The St. Sophia Cathedral houses a fresco representing the whole family, Yaroslav, Irene, as injured was known in Rus, their five daughters and five sons. Yaroslav had three of his daughters married to foreign princes who lived in exile at his court, Elizabeth of Kiev to Harald III of Norway, who attained her hand by his military exploits in the Byzantine Empire. Anastasia of Kiev to the future Andrew I of Hungary, Anne of Kiev married Henry I of France and was the regent of France during their son's minority, possibly, Agatha who married Edward the Exile, of the royal family of England, and was the mother of Edgar Thilling and Street. Margaret of Scotland Yaroslav had one son from the first marriage, his Christian name being Isla, question mark 1020 and six sons from the second marriage. Apprehending the danger that could ensue from divisions between brothers, he exhorted them to live in peace with each other. The eldest of these, Vladimir of Novgorod, best remembered for building the St. Sophia Cathedral in Novgorod, predeceased his father. Three other sons, Isyaslav, Sviatoslav, and Vsevilod, reigned in Kiev one after another. The youngest children of Yaroslav were Igor, 1036-1060, of Volin and Vyakslav, 1036-1057, of Smolensk. About the last one there are almost no information. Some documents point out the fact of him having a son Boris who challenged Vsevolod sometime in 1077-1078. Following his death, the body of Yaroslav the Wise was entombed in a white marble sarcophagus within Street Sophia Cathedral. In 1936, the sarcophagus was opened and found to contain the skeletal remains of two individuals, one male and one female. The male was determined to be Yaroslav, however the identity of the female was never established. The sarcophagus was again opened in 1939 and the remains removed for research, not being documented as returned until 1964. Then, in 2009, the sarcophagus was opened and surprisingly found to contain only one skeleton. 
that of a female. It seems the documents detailing the 1964 reinterment of the remains were falsified to hide the fact that Yaroslav's remains had been lost. Subsequent questioning of individuals involved in the research and reinterment of the remains seems to point to the idea that Yaroslav's remains were purposely hidden prior to the German occupation of Ukraine and then either lost completely or stolen and transported to the United States. Legacy Four different towns in four different countries were founded by and named after Yaroslav, Yaroslav, in today's Russia, Uriyev, now Tartu, Estonia, and another Uriyev, now Bilet Zukva, Ukraine. Yuri was Prince Yaroslav's baptismal name, Jaroslaw in Poland. Also, following the Russian custom of naming military objects such as tanks and planes after historical figures. The helmet worn by many Russian soldiers during the Crimean War was called the Helmet of Yaroslav the Wise. It was the first pointed helmet to be used by any army, even before German troops wore pointed helmets. In 2008 Yaroslav was placed first, with 40% of the votes, in their ranking of our greatest compatriots by the viewers of the TV show The Greatest Ukrainians. Afterwards one of the producers of The Greatest Ukrainians claimed that Yaroslav had only won because of vote manipulation and that, if that had been prevented, the real first place would have been awarded to Stepan Bandera. Yaroslav Tizya Kolekhnazad is a 2010 film based on his early life as a regional prince on the frontier. It is available with English subtitles as Iron Lord.